Today, we are talking all things food, right here in Savin's World. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Savin's World, the gaming channel for all things Seven Days to Die. Now, if you are ready to learn all things Seven Days to Die and take your Seven Days gameplay to the next level, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. Today, we are discussing all things food. In the recent Alpha 19 update, the Fun Pimps have added quite a lot of food recipes to Seven Days to Die. So today we are going to go through each one of these recipes. We're going to go through the perk needed to unlock them, exactly what they will give you in terms of food, health, and bonuses, and what it will take to actually cook these recipes. So let's head inside and let's get to it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Savin's Kitchen. Since today is all about food and cooking up those delicious recipes, I decided I'd better dress for the part. So I've got my tank top on and my shorts on, because you know it can get very hot in this kitchen. And I wanted to make sure and wear something nice and cool so I could stand the heat. But before we get started, let me give you a little tour of Savin's Kitchen. First up, take a look at our absolutely beautiful stainless steel refrigerators both equipped with rust spots galore, all the rust you would ever want on your stainless steel refrigerator. Please, Fun Pimps, give me back my beautiful, awesome looking, shiny stainless steel fridge. Please give it back to us. We want it back. And of course, you have plenty of cabinet space in Savin's kitchen. We have our coffee maker because let's face it, folks, Everybody needs that coffee in the morning to get their day started. We've got our beautiful microwave oven, which, you know, I don't usually use the microwave much when I cook, uh, except for to heat up the leftovers. We've got our little island here with double sinks, very beautiful, more cabinet space, and our trash compactor, of course. And the last item, the absolutely beautiful six burner wall ovens these things are amazing i cannot wait to start cooking on these bad boys wait wait i, I can't i can't cook with my oven with the six burner stove i i, I can't do anything with this Wh why it's in the game come on fun pimps make this operational you mean to tell me i got to do all my cooking on this stupid campfire ah that's a bummer and yes, unfortunately, folks, the wall oven, it's just for show. You can't use it. You gotta use the campfire. So now that you've seen my beautiful kitchen and where we're going to be making up all the food today, let's go ahead and dive right into the skills that you're going to need in order to unlock all of these recipes. Of course, I am talking about Master Chef. This is in the strength attribute. Now, for the food recipes, you actually do not have to go all the way to number five, to Master Chef, to unlock all of the food recipes. Level five of Master Chef will unlock the Grandpa's recipes, but those are drinks, and we're going to be covering drinks in a separate video. Today is all about food. In order to unlock all of the food recipes, you will need to get to level four Army Cook in Master Chef. That means you need to get your strength up to level 7. So now that we've taken a look at the skills, let's go ahead and start cooking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off at level 0, that's no perks into MasterChef, and we are going to go level by level, and I will show you what each point, what each level of MasterChef will unlock, what that food item will do for you, and exactly how to cook it. So... First up, let's take a look at level zero. You will notice at level zero, we only have two food recipes. These are the charred meat and the boiled eggs. Let's start with the charred meat. Charred meat will give you 10 food, five health. 
a max stamina bonus of 10, but it does have a negative penalty. You actually lose five water every time you eat a piece of charred meat. On the plus side, all it takes to cook up some charred meat is five pieces of raw meat. You don't need any of the tools. You don't, don't need a cooking pot. You don't need a grill. You don't need a beaker. You just lob the hunk of meat in the campfire and you're good to go. So five raw meat will get you one charred meat. The other item that you can craft at level zero is the boiled egg. Boiled egg will give you 10 food, five health, and a max stamina bonus of 10. In order to cook the boiled egg, you will need to find yourself one egg and one boiled water. You will also need a cooking pot in order to make boiled eggs. Now, let's move on to level one of Master Chef. That is Bachelor. Let's go ahead and buy that up and let's see what we can make. Level one of Master Chef opens up quite a few recipes. I went ahead and put them in order of lowest food to highest food, and we are going to take these bad boys one at a time. The first item up is the baked potato. It'll give you four food, one health, and a max stamina bonus of 10. The great thing about the baked potato is all you need is one potato. It doesn't give you much food, but it also doesn't take much in order to cook. All you need is one potato, don't need any equipment, any, any of the extra tools. One potato is all it takes to cook up some baked potato. Next up, we have cornbread. Cornbread gives you four food, two health, and a max stamina bonus of 10. Now, in order to cook up some cornbread, you will need a cooking pot. You'll also need one cornmeal and one boiled water. Now, you are going to see cornmeal show up quite a bit as we go through this list. So, for all you cornmeal haters out there, stop it. Stop throwing away your cornmeal. You can actually make some very, very good food with cornmeal. It's useful. Save it. Don't throw it on the ground. Keep it. Next up is corn on the cob. Corn on the cob will give you five food, two health, and a max stamina bonus of 10. In order to cook corn on the cob, you are going to need a cooking pot. You're also going to need one ear of corn and a bottle of boiled water. The next recipe is grilled meat. Grilled meat will give you 10 food, five health, and a max stamina bonus of 10. Think of grilled meat as kind of an upgraded version of the charred meat. Gives you the same food, health, and stamina, but it takes away that water penalty. Now, the grilled meat does require a cooking grill in order to cook this recipe. So you will need to find the cooking grill before you can do grilled meat. But once you find a grill, it only costs you five raw meat. So the exact same cost as the charred meat, but you do not have that negative water penalty. Next up is boiled meat. Boiled meat will give you 10 food, 15 health, 10 water, and a max stamina bonus of 10. Boiled meat does require a cooking pot, and it will cost you 5 raw meat and 1 boiled water. And last up for level 1 is an oldie buddy goodie. The good old bacon and eggs. Oh, this brings back memories. I used to love making up the bacon and eggs back in, in previous alphas. Whew. This was the go-to for the longest time. Bacon and eggs will give you 36 food, 18 health, and a max stamina bonus of 10. Bacon and eggs does require a cooking pot, and you will also need to find five raw meat and two eggs. Let's move on to level two of Master Chef, Grandma. Level two of Master Chef opens up a whole bunch of recipes. Let's start off with the very first one, pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread gives you 12 food, 6 health, and a max stamina bonus of 20. In order to make the pumpkin bread, you are going to need a cooking pot. You will also need one pumpkin, one cornmeal, and one boiled water. Next up, we have vegetable stew. Vegetable stew will give you 31 food, 15 health, 20 water, and a max stamina bonus of 20. In order to cook up some vegetable stew, you will need a cooking pot. You will also need two potatoes, two ears of corn, two mushrooms, and one boiled water. 
One interesting fact about vegetable stew. This recipe is one of the only recipes in the game that you can make 100% independently. Meaning you do not have to kill anything. You do not have to loot anything. You can actually get all of these items on your own. You can grow potatoes. You can grow corn. You can grow mushrooms. Water is everywhere. You can get glass jars anywhere. Save them up. Get your murky water. Create the boiled water. This is a 100% sustainable recipe. This is one of the recipes in the game, one of the only recipes in the game that you can make without having to do a whole bunch of looting or hunting or gathering or anything like that. This is actually one of the best recipes in the game for all of you out there who are looking to be as self-sufficient as possible. Next up, we have pumpkin cheesecake. This is a very, very unique recipe. It gives you 42 food. 21 health, a max stamina bonus of 20, plus it gives you a very unique bonus. Pumpkin Cheesecake gives you plus 5% to bartering when buying items. So, if you are in the trader and you have your eye on something that's pretty spendy, eat yourself a slice of pumpkin cheesecake before you make your purchase and you will actually save 5% off of the cost of that item. And the great thing is it lasts for five minutes. So you don't have to be in a huge rush in order to make your purchase. In order to cook the pumpkin cheesecake, you're going to need a cooking pot, one pumpkin, one egg, one cornmeal, one animal fat, and one grain alcohol. The next recipe is blueberry pie. Blueberry pie will give you 45 food, 22 health, and a max stamina bonus of 20. In order to cook the blueberry pie, you will need a cooking pot. You will also need five blueberries, one egg, one cornmeal, one animal fat, and one boiled water. The next recipe is pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie gives you 50 food, 25 health, and a max stamina bonus of 20. In order to cook up some pumpkin pie, you are gonna need a cooking pot. You're also gonna need two pumpkin, one egg, one cornmeal, one animal fat, and one boiled water. The next recipe is steak and potato meal. Oh, I'm a steak and potatoes kind of guy in real life, so this recipe just hits me real close to home. Steak and potato meal will give you 50 food, 25 health, and a max stamina bonus of 20. In order to make the steak and potato meal, you are going to need a cooking grill. You're also going to need five raw meat, two potatoes, two mushrooms, and one animal fat. And the last recipe on this tier is the good old meat stew. Oh, this is another one that brings back memories. Back in the day, meat stew was the go-to. This was how you got your wellness up back when wellness was a thing. Oh, I used to love meat stew, man. It was my favorite. Like I said, it was the go-to later on in the game. Meat stew will give you 50 food, 25 health, 20 water, and a max stamina bonus of 20. In order to cook up some delicious meat stew, you are going to need a cooking pot. You will also need five raw meat, two potatoes, two ears of corn, one animal fat, and one boiled water. Now let's move on to level three of Master Chef, short order cook. The first recipe opened up at this level is fish tacos. Fish tacos will give you 46 food, 40 health, and a max stamina bonus of 30. Fish tacos do require a cooking grill in order to cook, and you will need one can of salmon and two cornmeal. Now, remember what I told you about the cornmeal? This is why you do not throw away your cornmeal. Fish tacos is one of the simplest recipes in the game, yet it is one of the most beneficial. All it takes is one can of salmon and two cornmeal, and you have yourself a very filling, filling meal. So don't throw away your cornmeal. Save it up. Make yourself some fish tacos. Next up is the good old chili dog. Who doesn't love a chili dog? Oh, it's making me hungry just talking about it. Chili dog will get you 53 food, 30 health, and a max stamina bonus of 30. In order to cook up some chili dogs, you are going to need a cooking pot. 
You will also need a can of chili, five raw meat, and one cornbread. Now notice that this needs cornbread, not cornmeal. That does mean, unfortunately, you will have to cook up some cornbread before you can cook up some chili dogs. However, the ingredient list for the chili dog is still pretty light, and they are pretty easy to make. You'll find chili quite a lot. You actually start the game with a can of chili. So if you want to, you can always save your can of chili to make up a delicious chili dog down the road. The next recipe is, in my opinion, one of the best in the game. I'm talking about Sham Chowder. Sham Chowder will give you 53 food, a whopping 80 health, a max stamina bonus of 30, plus it also will boost your fortitude by one point for 10 whole minutes. So it heals you up, boosts your fortitude, gives you plenty of food, it is awesome. And all you need to cook up some sham chowder is your good old cooking pot, a can of sham, two potatoes, two ears of corn, and a boiled water. Now, why do I love sham chowder so much? Well, it's because the ingredients are everywhere. You can get sham anywhere. Hit up a Shamway food, I guarantee you're gonna leave that place with probably 10 or 12 cans of sham. Potatoes you can grow, corn you can grow, boiled water is very easy to get, or if you run out, grab all of your spare empty jars, fill them up with murky water, and you can make up boiled water till the cows come home. So, a relatively cheap recipe cost, plus all of those unique bonuses and that insane amount of health that you get from sham chowder, is why I believe sham chowder is one of the best recipes in seven days to die. And the last recipe unlocked at this level is Hobo Stew. Hobo Stew will give you 64 food, 32 health, 20 water, and a max stamina bonus of 30. In order to cook up some Hobo Stew, you will need a cooking pot. You will also need 10 rotting flesh, 2 potatoes, 2 ears of corn, 1 animal fat, and 1 boiled water. The Hobo Stew recipe is not too terrible. If you can get past the fact that you're eating rotting flesh, uh, then go ahead and make up your, uh, your make yourself up some hobo stew. Me personally, I like to keep the rotting flesh in order to make up farm plots so I can grow vegetables. But if you want to use your rotting flesh to uh, make some nasty stew, go go right ahead. Again, if you can get past the fact that you are eating rotting flesh, the hobo stew is actually a pretty darn good recipe. Now, let's move on to level four of Master Chef, Army Cook. Now, one thing I do want to point out with this level of Master Chef is not only do you get your cook speed up to 40% faster. Oh, I'm sorry, that's one thing I did not mention. Every level of Master Chef increases your cook speed by 10%. So, 10% at level one, 20% at two, 30% at three, 40% at level four. Level 4 also gives you the bonus that you will use 20% less of a recipe's main ingredient. So let's take a look at all of these mega recipes that you can make at level 4 of Master Chef. These things are insane. Let's start at the lowest food level, the infamous tuna fish gravy toast. That doesn't even sound good. However, it is one of the best recipes in the game as it pertains to food, health, and max stamina bonus. Because you will be getting 90 food, 45 health, and a max stamina bonus of 40. In order to cook up some weird tuna fish gravy toast, you will need a cooking pot. You will also need one can of tuna, one cornmeal, two cornbread, two animal fat, and one can of peas. Next up on the list is Shepherd's Pie. Shepherd's Pie will give you 104 food, that's insane, 52 health, and a max stamina bonus of 40. Shepherd's Pie will require a cooking pot. You will also need lamb rations, can of peas, one ear of corn, two animal fat, and one potato. The next recipe is Gumbo Stew. Gumbo Stew will give you 112 food, 
Again, that's insane. 56 health, 20 water, and a max stamina bonus of 40. In order to cook up some gumbo stew, you are going to need a cooking pot. You will also need one large beef ration, one can of peas, one can of stock, two animal fat, and one boiled water. And the last recipe unlocked at level four of Master Chef is spaghetti. Spaghetti gives you a whopping 122 food, 61 health, and a max stamina bonus of 40. In order to cook up some spaghetti, you are going to need a cooking pot, a large beef ration, one can of pasta, one mushroom, two animal fat, and one boiled water. And that is all of the food recipes in 7 Days to Die Alpha 19. Now there are a couple other things that I want to cover before we call this a video. You may have noticed that a lot of the main recipes, the mega recipes, require a lot of canned items in order to cook. As such, I would recommend that when you are looking at all of your canned goods, separate your canned goods into two categories. Now, if you look at a canned food, it will give you the stats that you will gain. But if you also take a look right here, this will give you a hint on whether or not this particular canned good is used in a recipe. So this one is not. How can you tell? Well, let's take a look at the pasta, for, sure, for instance. Notice the difference? This one has a recipe icon. So, if the canned good says recipe, you know that it is used in one of the major food recipes and you may want to save it for later. So I went ahead and I grabbed a, a few canned goods here and let's take a look. So, chicken soup, no recipe, go ahead and eat that whenever you want. Can of stock, oh, it's got a recipe, probably want to save that if you can. Salmon has a recipe, can of pasta has a recipe. Miso soup does not have a recipe, safe to eat whenever you want, don't have to save that one at all. And can of cat food, no recipe there, go ahead and eat that up. So what I would recommend doing is separating your cans. Keep the ones that do not have a recipe in one container and keep the ones that do have a recipe in a separate container. That way you know which ones are safe to eat and which ones you need to save for those awesome, awesome recipes. Now, if you're starving and all you have are canned goods that have recipes, by all means, eat the canned goods. It's better to eat them instead of starving to death. There's no point in saving them for later if that means you're gonna starve to death. So, if you have nothing else available, eat them up. If you can, save them, because the recipes that use these canned goods will give you a whole lot more food than the measly 15 that you'll get from the can itself. Save it if you can, eat it only if you must. And keep your recipe canned food and your non-recipe canned food separate. That way you know which ones are which. So there you have it, folks. That was All Things Food. We went through each one of the perk levels for Master Chef and exactly what recipes are opened up on each level. We also went through the benefits of each recipe, how to make them, what you need, and what bonuses you may get from these recipes. I also offered up a couple of tips and tricks that I feel are important, and hopefully you will find them very, very helpful. Is there anything regarding food recipes that I may have missed that you folks would like me to cover? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's Kitchen, which is a part of Savin's World. If you found this video helpful and or enjoyable, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. And if you're feeling especially generous today, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.